Alright guys, welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today you guys wanted a aggressive flying mob, so I put together this uh, interesting ghost-like texture for the mob itself. It doesn't actually have anything on the interior, but it does uh, have a nice little texture on the exterior and stuff like that. As you can see over here, we have just one group, and we're going to put our two different cubes in here. I have one for the eyes which are sort of put back a little bit using the inflation, which is on this side. And then we have the body, which is the main texture up here. And as you can see, we just have that one texture assigned and everything else is ready to go. So all you need to do is make sure that you are, um, your model identifier is, you do not put a class in because that will give it an error in mCreator. So you don't do that and make sure that you have your file name set up. So once you've done that, make sure that you're on the uh, modded entity uh, workspace. And then what you can do is you can have the option for exporting and then Java, uh, Java entity. Um, there are other options here, but uh, the easiest one is Java entity. So just do that one. All right, so now that that part's all taken care of, um, what I have done is I've put together a, a project workspace. So we have the Java entity here, we have the block bench model, and then we have the entities for models and then models, textures, again, entity. And then we have our AI tasks. This is the task that I used in the AI pathfinding. And then we have our workspace. So again, this is for um, MCreator 2024.1 and Minecraft 1.20.4. Should be fine to use across other versions if you follow the tutorial, but uh, we'll be covering it on that version. So anything of this version or above, it should work just fine. Uh, when you're importing the uh, workspace. So let's go ahead and open up the workspace and then we can actually see how everything is set up. All right, so the first thing that we should look at is the assets. Uh, under textures, I have a texture for entity. If you're not familiar with that, just uh, select the import entity texture and select the uh, texture for your entity. And then you want to import Java model and then basically go ahead and assign or select the model itself. And then you want to set the animation for the head to uh, the head animation. Uh, though you don't really ne necessarily need to do that for all of them. Uh, it's you, you should have like some sort of head animation. Uh, though I've only done that to kind of like pivot the NT around a little bit. It won't make too much difference if you select different animations if you want or not any at all. So uh, just make sure that the model is imported and that there's no issues when you go ahead and set it up. Once you've done that, create a living entity, which is this one right here. And then what we have is uh, we had to give it a name. So I just called it ghost for the name itself, the display name. I've set up the model itself and the texture. So I've selected that from the drop down list for our two assets. Um, all the other settings on this font on this thing can be customized. You don't necessarily need to use it. Mob, mob layers you can use. Um, there's no restrictions or anything for that. Behavior you should have it under mob, and then set your. I think that's about it. That's all you need to do for this page. You, nope, there is one other setting. You need to check the um box down here where it says uh check if the entity is a flying entity this will enable it to uh, have no gravity and allow it to fly around and stuff so you want to check this box uh sound you can set up the sound and stuff for the entity as well i've just set the um sound to be the gas for the ambient and hurt and death i don't have sound for stepping though probably won't make much sense. Sync data, these are the built-in variables for the entity. You can use these however you want. Uh, I don't have any inventory for it, didn't need it. And there are no um, triggers for this that are required. When we get to this part, this is where all the magic happens. So what you're gonna need to do is there's a template in here uh, called uh, flying towards aggressive player so mob flying mob aggressive towards player and you can import that and these are all the different procedures that you can 
uh, set up for the thing. You might notice that there's some change in how I've configured it. Um, this is for a few reasons, but um, I noticed that it was flying a little bit too slow for what I wanted. Uh, I've also moved all the blue blocks up towards the top here just so it's a little bit more uh, easier for it. So this part right here, right at this uh, part where it says do flying attack radius with speed of 2. So I've set this to 2 because then it will fly a little bit faster. And the radius is how, f how many blocks away will it basically um, target the entity that it should be attacking. So if you want it to have a larger range like zombies, I think zombies are like 32 blocks, you can increase this number to 32. You don't necessarily need any conditions for them, but you can set them up however you want. The next one does melee attack. So basically this allows it to uh, do attack uh, with the, um, what do you call it, like for the entity, so it will attack other entities. And again, we have a speed factor of two, so this allows it to get to the entity. And then attack, pl attack insight nearby, and there's entity type. So this is built into this other part here to make it target entities. Now, if you want it to target all entities, you can just select, um, what was it? There was, should be a living... Yeah, living entity that will target all living entities if you really wanted it to do that. Uh, other than that, you can just select player. You might need to select player anyways. So player and there's also server player if you wanted it to be on server side as well. And then there is fight attacker mob back uh, call for help. And then you can enable this if you want it to uh, do things like zombies, how they call for additional uh, zombies to come by so you can check that if you want that kind of thing and there's fly around with speed factor this controls the uh, regular movement for the entity so basically it allows it to fly around and stuff like that I've set this to a speed factor of 1 because it was really slow as well so at 0 0.8 it was just not fast enough for my, my, my liking and then there's uh, look around, so this kind of just makes it look around like most other entities. So again, these are the uh, blocks uh, that are in the template. I've com customized this and exported it as the AI tasks. It's in the workspace, so you guys can easily set this up using the same procedure here. And uh, just make sure that AI is enabled. And then spawning, uh, you just want to make sure that it's enabled here uh, for Aggressive mobs, you probably want it to despawn, and you want to set the um, spawning to ambient. This is things like bats. Um, you could technically go under monster and it will spawn on the surface as well, uh, but uh, generally flying creatures and stuff like that are marked as ambient for spawning, which are things like cave bats and stuff like that. And if you want it to be biome specific, then you want to basically set up the actual um, biome tag or you can select individual biomes if you really wanted to. And I've set the spawn rate between 1 and 4 for how many entities can actually spawn. You might need to play around with the spawning weight because there it might not always um, generate that commonly. Uh, so I've left it at this number but we'll be using a command to generate them over just to see if they do generate and uh, that's all there is for the settings like that's all you need to worry about everything else is customizable so let's hop in a game and then i'll quickly demonstrate how it works all right so i'm currently in a cave i have netherite armor on me uh, as you can see i've already tested uh, the um, entities itself uh, what I'm going to do is actually downgrade to diamond armor and just keep the netherite sword just so it's a little bit easier to see how everything works and we don't have all that extra additional buff on the armor itself so we can swap these out. We can always put them on again if we need to. And I will keep that sword handy and then what we can do is we can go ahead and run this command which uh, basically execute as and then at E and then we're typing the uh, the name of the mod namespace uh, or type and then equal and then the mod namespace which is aggressive flying entity and then we're typing the name of the, the, um, 
the type of the entity. So in this case, it's ghost. And we're running TP and then we're TPing to the player. So I'm going to copy that and we're going to go over to this side of the ravine because it's just going to be easier to do it that way. So we'll go ahead and uh, stand a little bit over here. And we have a whole bunch of them that spawn in. So we'll go over here and then we'll just set our game mode to survival. And I think one just died. So as you can see, they're starting to come towards us. Fairly easy to kill. And you can see we do take a little bit of damage from them. I could adjust the uh, attack strength too if I really wanted to. And I'll make it a little bit harder to kill. So that's basically it. There isn't too much uh, to explain other than just the template and stuff like that. It's pretty easy to set up. Um, there's a few over there. I think he's targeting me. There we go. Hi. How you doing? Sometimes they come down pretty quickly when they're directly above you, too. So, I've noticed that. I don't know how much damage they actually do without armor, but we did take a couple points with the diamond armor for sure. So, outside of that, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, let me know what you liked about it, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Thank you.